Hi and welcome to this video where as you can see quite a lot has happened this week. So I started the video off by removing the front bumper module which houses the radiator for the cooling system and also the air conditioning condenser. So that's come off. It wasn't too bad, a few little issues but not too bad. I then come to removing the DPF and then the games started to happen. So I had to remove the pressure differential pipe on the DPF and that didn't want to come off. But it did come off with a pair of plumber's Stilsons, which wasn't pretty, but it came off. Then the heat shield was able to be removed and then finally the DPF was actually removed. Now, I was actually quite surprised at how heavy this is. Um, but one of the things I noted was, it's actually got a bolt at the bottom. So you can actually undo this and remove the DPF section, which is the lower section, um, for possible cleaning or replacement, which is quite sort of handy as a serviceable item. So basically that's what this video is about. It's getting to this stage so that next week, my focus can be then on this oil cooler here and the pipe going to the turbo. These two things are my suspicions that might be blocked, which has caused the top end problem. Um, so I'm going to remove this, see if it is blocked. And I believe there's a little filter, gauze filter in this pipe um, that often blocks up and then starves the turbo of oil. So that's what I'll be looking at next week. So anyway. So hope you enjoy watching this video and have a good weekend. Thank you. So I best start by draining the coolant. So as this front section will come forward and ultimately come off, it's obviously worth getting this coolant out. Now, the theory is you just remove these clips underneath and drain the coolant. Well, in my case, the clips will just fall apart. So that's not quite so good. And also being under the car isn't very good either. Probably better to actually do this from the front of the car and put your hands underneath. The funnel idea didn't quite work. And also bear in mind that antifreeze is actually highly poisonous, so you actually don't want to ingest any accidentally. So let's have a look at the other one then. See if this one's going to just fall apart. Might be worth knowing this now. And it is, it's completely rusted through. So I think I will actually have to replace those. I don't think there's any way around that even for me. So what I'll do is I'll clean that rust off with like a sort of scraper just to, because the metal sort of embedded itself into the rubber now. So it's a little bit tidier. So that's how it is. It might actually be worth just giving this a quick test to see how much antifreeze is in this. just that I know whether I ingested much or not. So we're looking for the floating discs and it looks like we've got three definite floaters, as the saying goes. Right then, now to removing the front panel that houses the cooling system radiator and the air conditioning condenser. So it might be worth just seeing a couple of photos here to show where the four fasteners are on each side. So we've got a couple that hold sort of like the frame on there. I think that's like the bonnet catch frame because it holds the catches for the bonnet. And in theory, these should be undone with a 13 millimeter socket um, if they come undone. Unfortunately, I'm going to be getting the same issue that I've been getting throughout this car and that is most of the fasteners don't want to come undone. So generously giving that some lubrication there. 
and then I'll try going backwards and forwards and just seeing if I can loosen it. Let's try the other one. Okay, so that one's coming out, which is good news. So I'm going to have to work on this other one a little bit more. But we do get there eventually. Right, we're nearly out with this one. Yeah. So that did come out in the end. As you can see, everything seems to be pretty corroded here. But in fairness, I do believe this car might have come from Scotland, as the number plate does say SC on it. So for these other two bolts, it's a 10mm socket. Now thankfully this one came out okay. So that was good news. But the next one wasn't. So we've just got one more down there on the inner wing. Which I thought might have just come straight out, but it wasn't going to. So this one's sort of goes into the plastic. Look at the way that all flexes. The metal is so thin. Right, so this is starting to fail. Um, yeah, so that's sort of failed. It's broken apart like so. I'm just going to check the thickness of the metal now because I'm actually quite amazed at how much that flexed. And it's only 0.83 millimetres thick. Perhaps that's part of the crumple zone. Okay, so back onto the other side. And is it going to get any easier? And the answer to that is no. It's not. So here we go. So this is the one that's going to be a problem again. Yeah, that's not. It doesn't want to turn. No, just trying to wiggle it. Let's try the other one. Yeah, so that one's moving. Try wiggling it. I'm going to resort to an air tool in a minute on the other one. All right, so we've got one down. So we've just got to get this other one out. All right, so we're going onto the air tool now, using a light one just to try and sort of shake it up a bit. And it does seem to be working. It looks like it's coming out. Just keep reversing it backwards and forwards. There we go. Look at the rust on that. It doesn't look good really, does it? It says July 2009 there. Okay, so back onto the headlights. So this is 10 millimeter socket again. So that one comes out okay. And then for the wing, let's see what happens here. I think it came out, but sort of broke at the same time. Right then, so that's the main bolts out. I think I was pinging it there with contempt um, as I'm not very impressed with this. Alright then, so we'll just take the coolant bottle out now. So that's a metal clip there, spring clip. So we just need to pop that out to one side and then off it comes. I've already drained this earlier. So, and then what we need to do is remove the air induct pipe that goes to the air filter. That's pretty easy, that's just pops in at the front. And I think it was broken at the back. Um, so that actually might be screwed on. But on mine, it wasn't. There we go, pop that to one side. Right then, so now we've got the bonnet release cable. So you just need to sort of open this piece of plastic up and then we've just got like a little single cable going to a dual cable one for each side that was easy enough just pop that out like so 
Right, so we are starting to make some progress now. And we've also got the washer pipe here. I mean, normally you just pull this um, front section forward, but I actually want to remove it totally if I can. So what you will need is some sort of thread. So it's normally M8 thread. And if you put a couple of these like long nuts on, these are 30 millimeters long. And put a piece of M8 thread in at one end. I'll take these out from when I was doing my R50. But they've reversed it on this car. So instead of the thread going into it, you've now got a thread coming out, which means you need a socket. Right, so there's our M8 socket, as it were. So this means that we can then just pull that bumper section or the section which houses the coolant radiator and condenser. We can pull it forward on these two threads. So they just pop in there. The biggest issue is obviously the air conditioning condenser because those pipes, you've got a couple of flexible pipes but they're not overly flexible. You can't sort of pull that air conditioning condenser around too much because obviously you don't want it to leak. All right, so it's starting to move now. So it's now disconnect the headlights. So let's just push down there. There's another one of those clips underneath as well. So gently sort of ease that off like so. Let's just push in at the back. So like I said, normally with the manual it's just so you can gain better access by pulling this section forward. So you don't actually need to remove it totally, um, but I'm choosing to remove it for the camera. So it's 7mm socket there on the turbo intercooler pipe. So we'll just disconnect that. Obviously I removed the intercooler in the last video. So this is just the empty pipe. A little bit of oil in there. All right, so how much movement have we got now? So it's nearly coming forwards. We have still got a few things connected though. So we've got the two coolant pipes there on the right hand side, just below the washer bottle. Those are going to need to come off. And obviously the washer bottle side, we've got a few things that need to be disconnected on the left hand side of the car. So I'll start here and just disconnect the ABS uh, connector and the brake wear connector. This is the brake wear one, the clear one, and this is the ABS wheel sensor. We'll disconnect those. And then we've also got a level sensor here. So we'll just pop that connector off. Like so. And then obviously the pump itself needs to be disconnected. And then we will need to remove the actual washer pipe as well. Try and be careful there that you don't actually damage the pipe. Okay, so that's the washer bottle all disconnected. So we should be nearly clear now. So I have a quick photo of the other side though, because there's two horn connectors there. So we just pop those off. My two rusty horns. There we are. And there's also a clip there holding the wiring loom in place. I'll just try and prise that out. I mean, by removing the whole front end, it will give me excellent access to the oil cooler and the pipe. And don't forget the other headlight as well. Let's just get this one off. Oh, 
like so. So it looks to be just the two coolant pipes now. Obviously the air conditioning pipes down there. Um, but we can't disconnect that. So this is the connector for the, uh, the coolant fan. That's that disconnected. Now have a look at these two pipes now. We just clip those off. At least they didn't fall apart. So they actually might be reusable. Then I normally just sort of massage the pipe a bit with some sort of pipe wrenches. I think they're called water pipe, water pump pliers or something. That just breaks the seal. We can just pop that off now. now a bit of water still in there, a bit of coolant. So try and catch that. Like I say, you don't want to put the coolant down the drain because it is actually poisonous. And you definitely don't want that in the water supply. So we've got one more pipe there. So I'm just going to try and use my water pump pliers just to pinch that and clip it off. Now hopefully the front section now should be clear. See how much movement we've actually got now. Right, so if I pull this forward, so it looks like it's just the air conditioning pipes now that are in the way. Which I'm going to now need to work around. So to remove the condenser, it's a Torx 25, one on each side, holding on a couple of plastic brackets there that hold the condenser and the cooling radiator. Right, so that gets that out of the way. Now there is also one more nut or bolt at the bottom here. I'll show a photograph of this because it's tucked away there. There's like a fixing screw there, and if you have a quick look at the back of it, I've split the photo there so you can see that single screw that's holding some of the pipework in position. So that's a 10 millimeter socket. Let me just pop this screw out. So that should enable the air conditioning pipes to just sort of hopefully move around to the side. Now the the only thing is I think the water bottle or screen wash bottle will be in the way so we'll just remove that now. That's a Torx 25. So hopefully, I mean normally I expect BMW would drain the air conditioning system because you have to sort of remove the um, refrigerants. You're not allowed to just let it go straight into the atmosphere. And then they'd obviously refill it afterwards, but obviously that would add to the cost. So we've got a plastic rivet here just for the screen wash bottle. And it's quite a complicated sort of shape there. Somebody must have enjoyed designing that. They got carried away, I think. Very impressive, that. Right then, so now we should better just lift the condenser off very carefully and try and just tuck it around the side because there is two flexible pipes but you don't have a lot of movement at all I mean really you'd have a second person now hold this while you just pull the front off obviously I don't quite have that luxury so I'm gonna to have to try and do it on my own if I can just try and pull that forwards 
and just gradually drop the condenser behind. Like I say, be very careful. You don't want to strain those pipes. Now the front end now should be completely clear to be lifted off. Try and get, find somewhere to get a purchase on this. There we go. And it's completely clear. And that's what's on the back of it. So there's quite a bit going on. We've obviously got the cooling fan there. And we've got some flaps to let the air through. And the big pipe is the pipe to the turbo intercooler. So just show a photo of that, of the different parts of this. And then we'll have a close up look at the fan. Because there is a resistor on that fan. And I also think there's a thermal fuse, if I'm correct. Because sometimes that resistor fails. Right then, so now we can have a good look at the front of the car. So there's the DPF and the catalytic converter behind that massive heat shield. And we've got an electrical sensor there going to the center oh, or between the catalytic converter and the DPF. There's a temperature sensor. And then we've got a couple of pipes which are the differential pressure pipes. I think that's for measuring whether the DPF is full or not. Obviously as it fills up the pressure would increase on the first pipe. And then this is a close-up of the alternator side. There's the two pipes, the differential pressure pipes. Alright, so now we're going to have a crack on at this. I'll just highlight some of the parts there so we can see the oil cooler which is what I'm actually ultimately trying to get to and there's the temperature sensor that needs to be removed next. Right then so removing the catalytic converter and the diesel particulate filter. So I'll start by removing the heat sensor Now you could use a socket like this um, so you need a 14 millimeter socket either way um, but I'm going to try and use one of these brake, brake pipe spanners because it grips all the way around. And I'm a bit worried about sort of damaging the flats of this. So that's working quite nicely. That's actually removing that. Keep adding a plenty of penetrating fluid there. So obviously that's... That's good news that's come out. Make sure you don't twist the wire. Because um, obviously if you don't unclip it, it's just going to keep twisting. And then you'll snap the wires inside the sensor. So my connector's covered in oil. So I presume that's because it's below the oil filter. Unless it's coming out from the injectors at the top. And then coming down. Anyway, so this has come out, which is good news. So they're quite useful little spanners to have, those are. Especially for the brakes, when you're trying to take the pipes off the brakes. So there's our sensor. So that looks pretty delicate. So probably best put that somewhere safe. I'll also try and get this oil off the connector as well. So there's that oil cooler just next to it there, which I'm curious to know whether it's blocked. Right then, so now we go to the connector. This is the differential pressure sensor connector. So like I say, I think this measures the pressure difference between the start of the DPF and after the DPF to see whether it's blocked at all. So it's a Torx 25 for that screw. And I'll just pop that back in because I'm obviously building up quite a lot of screws now. I don't want to lose all these. Now, this is where the trouble happens. So it's a 19mm spanner 
for this pipe and it wasn't going to go I could feel the crow's foot was actually going to slip off this it's lifting the engine up something's going to snap so we'll try a bigger bar no you just know it's not going to work something's going to give there's a slight amount of movement a very small amount which i was actually hopeful that i could keep working this backwards and forwards um unfortunately it wasn't going to be that easy So I tried to heat it up with some map gas. Um, then my mat started to get rather smoky and I thought I started getting a bit worried there. Not have a fire, please. Yeah, so let's not have a fire. That seems very smoky. It's supposed to be fireproof those. Right, so I've heated it up and I think, right, we'll try the one underneath, just see if this one plays. And it does. This one comes out lovely. Now, I mean, presumably this one obviously is cooler because um, the first pipe is obviously in a very hot position, just coming straight out from the exhaust. So we're back on it again. I'm going to just try and keep moving it backwards and forwards. Normally, these sort of things would undo. As long as you've got some movement, you can normally get more movement. Yeah, this wasn't going to work. So something was wrong, so I actually reached for a pair of Stilsons. Thought, right, tighten it a bit. Right, let's take this thing out now. This is going to be a one-way path. We might get it out, but it also might break something. So even with that, the amount of effort I was having to put on it, um, the Stilsons are quite effective. Alright, so it's out. I think we've got a damaged thread on there. Um, but it's off. I wanted it off, and we got it off. Right then, so we can remove this differential pipe work. You can see the thread there slightly, slightly ruined. And there we go. So that's the pipe work with the sensor on the end. So hopefully the rest of it will now go a little bit smoother. We've obviously had a fair share of dodgy bolts so far. So now 10 millimeter socket for the seven heat shield screws. And thankfully these all came out quite nicely. So I'll show where each screw is. So that's our third one. And just by the alternator is our fourth. Just at the bottom, this was quite rusty, but it came out. That's the fifth one. And then another rusty one, this is quite squeaky. Number six. And then the final one, just there by the oil cooler. Okay then, so this heat shield should now just come off and reveal the catalytic converter and DPF, which is quite a substantial unit. It's quite something to bolt something that big on the front of the engine. Yeah, so here's a couple of photos showing the actual heat shield and the fixing holes. And there's a heat shield at the back as well, the smaller one. And here's the two of them coupled together. Let's give you some idea. And we'll have a quick look at things now and see what we've got. So there's a bolt there that you can actually undo the DPF and remove it from the main part of the cat 
and there's our turbo back onto the oil filter housing gearbox and if we have a quick look over the other side so there's my um, messed up thread there yeah okay then so going on to the top of the engine now we're going to just pull this plastic engine cover off because I need to remove this ducting pipe between the turbo and the throttle body so it's a 10 millimeter spanner for this so it's just that and then a seven millimeter socket for the pipe and then this should just pry off and then lift up there's a seal in there on the turbo it just lifts off and then pops off like that okay so yeah we have got some oil in there so right let's take this other part of the heat shield off so again it's a 10 millimeter socket so this is a normal flat head but it does have a pointed end on that one and then this one's got like a ball ball joint on the end or a popper for the plastic cover so we should just slide this part up and out the way it's certainly quite a process to get to this pipe because this the turbo pipe goes behind that um, DPF and we do need to have a look at that pipe because that could well be blocked and starving the turbo of oil right so we just lubricate the the main clip there that's holding the turbo so this pipe sort of intrigued me as to why it moved I, I just baffled me that whether it's supposed to move or not I don't know there was no leakage of oil but anyway so 16 millimeter spanner for this clamp that holds the turbo to the um, filter so pop that off might need to take it apart it's quite a strong clip that so it did take quite a bit of prizing to pull those two apart we'll come back to that okay now so it's a 13 millimeter deep socket for the two main nuts that are actually holding the DPF in position there's one of them thankfully they came off there's the second one there All right, so we're nearly at the point of removing this so I'll just try to use some sort of tool just to force these this clamp apart enough so I could get it off there we are right then now this is surprisingly heavy I, I don't know what I was expecting but this is it's heavy and this mine's full up perhaps they're light when they're new perhaps mine's full of soot In theory, I probably should actually clean this before putting it back on the car. That is heavy. Okay, so now the rear shield just comes off. And then we can see the actual pipe there that goes to the turbo. That's the pipe I obviously need to remove. Because I believe there might be a filter in that. So that's for the next video. So anyway, so here's the DPF filter and I'll probably open this up next week and have a look inside and then that's next week's work as well is that oil cooler there so I've given this all a bit of a clean up for the photos right then so here's some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer so we start here with the screws that were holding the main panel on at the front on each side 
Obviously those were a little bit disastrous. Now the front module. So here we can just look down there and see the pipes there. So those are the horn connectors. And then the washer bottle. And there was the back of the module showing all the fan. And there's a close up of that fan and the resistor. And the thermal fuse, I believe. So there is quite a bit of pipe work going on there. I'll include more photos of this because just in case you need to see something or the location of something. So there's plenty of photos on that. So then the front of the engine showing our oil cooler, the temperature sensor there, the differential pipe work, back onto the oil cooler side, an oily gearbox. So there's our temperature sensor, the differential pressure sensor, general side view, there's the turbo, and there's our DPF showing, and another view of it from the other side. Okay then, so I think that concludes this, and you've been watching Removing the Diesel Particulate Filter on a 2009 Mini R56. And thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you service and maintain your car within your budget. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in March 2022, and I can be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coots and Gators.